When you think of school shootings, the first thing that probably comes to mind are events such as Columbine or Sandy Hook. Atrocities against humanity played out by teenage or 20-some year old men. But this led me to ask the question, who is the world's youngest school shooter? Well, today we'll find out. Since the dawn of the new millennium, it seems as though there has been an uptick in school shootings. These horrible acts of violence are usually carried out by adolescents, who feel like social outcasts and want to bring pain and suffering to the people they feel wrong them. Usually the perpetrators of these shootings are in their teens. But what happens when the killer is a child, who isn't even old enough to properly understand the concept of death? Well, this story begins in the year 2000 with a six-year-old boy named Dedrick Owens who was enrolled as a first grader at the Buell Elementary School in Mount Morris Township, Michigan. Dedrick had a very troubled home life. His father, who was also named Dedrick, but without the K, had gone to prison for burglary and possession of cocaine with intent to distribute when his son was a toddler. This left young Dedrick along with his brother under the sole care of their mother, Tamarla. She did her best to provide for her children, but eventually fell behind on her home payments and was foreclosed upon. After that, Dedrick was forced to live with his uncle, Jamel James. The conditions the boy was living under here were nothing short of abysmal. He and his brother were forced to share a tiny, dirty old sofa as a bed. As if that wasn't bad enough, Jamel's home was an active crack den. On a daily basis, drug addicts were coming and going from the house, buying and selling large amounts of cocaine. Many of these people were also armed with guns, and Jamel himself kept several firearms hidden around the premises. According to family members, Dedrick liked to distract himself from the terrible things going on around him by watching TV shows and movies. He reportedly had a particular fascination with excessively violent media. The bloodier, the better. He would apparently spend hours in front of the TV watching these programs. And because the reality around him was just as cruel, he quickly became desensitized to it all. With his developing brain having trouble understanding the difference between fiction on the screen and his dark reality. Dedrick's troubled home life also led to many problems at school. He was getting sent to the principal's office and made to stay after class almost every day. These outbursts started small with him swearing at and flipping off his teachers and classmates. Hardly typical behavior for a first grader, but things would soon escalate to extremes. Dedrick began punching students over small disagreements, and even once stabbed a young girl with a pencil. He was developing a bad reputation with this worrying behavior. Many authority figures became worried for the well-being of his classmates. But with the father serving a prison sentence, a mother too busy working just to stay afloat, and a cesspool to call home, the overworked teachers did their best to provide a stable learning environment for the young boy. It would soon turn out, however, that this wasn't enough. On February 29, 2000, Dedrick, with his increasingly violent behavior, took a knife and a handgun he found in a shoebox in his uncle's house to school with him. According to some, the knife had actually been seen by a teacher earlier in the morning, but for whatever reason had not been reported to authorities. Later that day, Dedrick got into a fight with a fellow classmate, climaxing in Dedrick allegedly saying, Do you want me to take out my gap and shoot you? No one knew how serious of a claim that really was. Eventually, as the students were walking through the hall in between classes, Dedrick walked up next to a six-year-old Kayla Rowland. Earlier in the week, Dedrick had reportedly tried to kiss Kayla, but was quickly turned down. In what appeared to be payback for this rejection, Dedrick turned to Kayla, pulled out his gun, and said, I don't like you, then shot the young girl at point-blank range. Without time to comprehend what happened, the educator's first reaction was to save Kayla's life, as she was immediately rushed to the hospital. Dedrick quickly fled the scene during the confusion, dumping the gun in a nearby trash can. A teacher would soon find him, however, in the bathroom, cowering in a corner in fear. As he would soon find out, his classmate had died at his hands. Dedrick was taken into custody by police and questioned about the crime. During their talk, it became clear that the first grader didn't have any understanding of the weight of what he had done. His young age and terrible surroundings had simply given him no way of knowing the consequences of shooting another human being. It seemed to many that this child didn't comprehend right from wrong. Dedrick was released without being charged for any crimes, as anyone below the age of seven is unable to be charged with a felony in most states. 
Even with this, law enforcement continued to search for the one responsible for allowing the student to gain access to a lethal weapon, and the book was soon thrown at his uncle. Jamel James pleaded no contest to involuntary manslaughter, contributing to the delinquency of a minor and gross neglect over the killing, and was sentenced to two years and five months behind bars. Dedrick and his siblings were then placed in the care of their aunt. As for the school, after Kayla's death, the Buell Elementary began to experience intense financial issues. Many of the students no longer felt safe there after what had happened. Many of them began suffering from severe anxiety and PTSD, with the effects still seen 20 years later. New admissions also began drying up, and just two short years later, the school closed its doors for good in 2002. The building quickly fell into disrepair, becoming a frequent target of hooligans and arsonists, and finally was demolished in 2009. As for Dedrick, according to his mother, he was placed in a private school in Flint, Michigan a few months after the events of February 29th. The public was never given the name of this school in order to protect the child's privacy, but it was presumably some sort of disciplinary academy. Dedrick's tuition was paid for by the state of Michigan, clearly trying to set the boy back on the right course in life after he had been given such a bad hand to start with. His life became a mystery as people moved on from the story, but some claim to have found him on MySpace in the late 2000s. Along with this, other sources claim he was arrested in 2012 on charges of second-degree home invasion and larceny, although we have personally not been able to confirm this. All we know for sure is that he still lives in Michigan, and hopefully has been living his life on the straight and narrow for the past few years. As of right now, Dedrick should be around the age of 26. It's tragic that this boy's terrible surroundings and role models pretty much doomed him to a rough life from a young age. Wherever he is and whatever he is doing with his life, hopefully he has come to terms with the horrible act he committed. So there you have an answer to the question of who is the world's youngest school shooter. And even though his MO is not the same as most others, that doesn't make this incident any less tragic. So until next time, thanks for watching.